She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is the Danny Johnson Show. 342 pounds. Totally embarrassed. Told he couldn't go on a ride at an amusement park there with his six-year-old daughter at the time. Completely hemorrhaging because of debt, bad relationships at home, no self-control with his wife and kids, drug addict, alcoholic, mess of a life. Hi, this is Danny Johnson. Here today on The Danny Johnson Show, we are going to unpack a story that is so compelling, a story that will inspire you, that has inspired me, and has actually inspired thousands of people from around the world. As we had put Jim Stansfield on an interview and on our video on our website, and, and the, the response was incredible. Today, do you need to be inspired to take your whole life and put it in a path that will bring transformation. We've all been in bad places in our life, right? And right here on The Danny Johnson Show, we help you to define success for you. You see, we live in a society where they tell us what success looks like, and it usually looks like buying a certain brand, driving a certain brand of a car, living in a certain size house, having a certain kind of a job with a certain kind of title and a certain kind of salary. If not, then having a certain kind of business. You see, our society has messaged us with all kinds of marketing and imagery telling us what success looks like. And if we don't measure up to that, then we are unsuccessful. Jim, three years ago, found a website called dannyjohnson.com and transformed his own life. He took steps, important steps, taking control over his health, his mind, his habits, his family. Desired to be a great father, but was failing as a father. Desired to be a great husband, but failing as a husband. Desired to succeed financially, but was failing financially. Could you imagine? 342 pounds, not that tall, carrying all that weight at such a young age, not to mention the weight of the debt, the weight of the horrible broken relationship. So by golly, my friend, if Jim can overcome the things he's had to overcome, then you can too. Jim, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for being willing to be transparent and share your story about what has happened in your life over the last three years. Welcome to the show. Oh, uh, thanks for having me, Danny. It's an honor to share my story with you. Um, it's been great. So three years ago, you found yourself 342 pounds. You were at yep. least 100 pounds overweight. And I, at least, yeah. I just told the bad part of your story, part of it. You also have quite a history before three years ago that kind of led you to the 342 pounds, that led you to the debt, that led you to the abuse of relationships and the abuse of alcohol and drugs. Can you tell us a little bit about that part of your story? Oh, sure. Um, you know, I was, when I was born, uh, I was a middle child. And, um, you know, I don't remember a lot of my childhood. Uh, I think that's kind of a, a, a gift that I was given, believe it or not. But some of the things I do remember, um, I was molested uh, by a priest and uh, other people, actually, um, at a very young age. And um, the priest, when he molested me, uh, one of the things I'll never forget him saying to me was, um, don't tell God, I'm a friend of God's, and if you tell anybody, you'll go to hell. Wow. And I lived by that my whole life. Um, I didn't tell anybody. I, I kept it a secret. Um, you know, obviously it caused a lot of anger issues. I did some very horrible things as a child that I'm not proud of um, because I was messed up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, fast forward uh, five or six years, the one person I was really close with was with my grandma. And my dad got promoted. We moved to Chicago from Cleveland. And um, my grandma passed away right after that, and she was my world. She was my only wow. safe place on the earth. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, this was 30 years ago, and when she died, it was like my world came crashing down. Wow. I blamed my parents. I blamed everybody. I blamed God, of course. God blamed everybody for every. I, I blamed God for everything. Wow. So I was sitting around depressed, um, gained 50 pounds uh, in three months. And um, I was sitting at home, lit our house on fire, uh, burned the house down to the ground, we had to live in an apartment for three months. Um, did everyone know you burnt the house down? My parents did, but I didn't know that they knew. So it caused a lot of 
problems because everybody was commenting to me. I was in fifth grade and everybody was like, oh my gosh, you did such a great job. You got out of the house. You called the fire department. We're so proud of you. And all I'm sitting here is thinking I started the house fire, you know? How did you start so, the house fire, a fifth grader? I, took, I, I, I stayed home from school. I was home by myself. I was laying on a couch. I emptied out a box of Diet Right, actually. Uh, grabbed some gasoline, lit the box on fire, poured gas on it, and walked out of the house. Wow. And um, I remember as I was walking out, watching the curtains go up in flames. Oh, my gosh. And just like, holy cow, what did I do? But it was over. You know, I had Jim, already done it. Jim, you have to answer this. Like, what? How did it enter your mind as a 10 or 11-year-old to set the family house on fire? I was just, I was depressed. Um, I was messed up. I was just, I was sitting on a couch. I stayed home from school and literally just like that, the thought popped in my head and I did it. Wow. And, and we had to live in an apartment for three months and uh, I had to go see counselors and the counselors were telling my parents that I had all sorts of problems. They wanted to institutionalize me wow. and my father like vehemently fought against it. And I thank God to this day that my father fought against that because I don't know what would have happened had I you know, wow. gone into an institution at 11 years old. Wow. Wow. Do you think that being molested, how old were you, by the way, when the priest molested you? I was four. Wow. Wow. I mean, this is intense. Okay. So you're molested at four years old and the priest tells you that he's a friend of God and that if you tell anybody, you were going to fry in hell. Yeah. So what was that like? Hearing those words, like, what I, did you do from there? I, I honestly, I don't really remember much. I mean, it's mm -hmm. kind of funny. Like, I remember flashcards of my childhood. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, up until about that time that I told you, pretty much everything in my childhood's a complete blur. Wow. And I just remember, like, little snippets. Like burning and the it's house never down. Anything good. Like burning the house down, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I, and it's like, and those moments are like etched in my brain. Like mm -hmm. I can, I can remember like thirty second snapshots of those moments. Wow. And I definitely remember like the moment of walking out of my house and seeing the curtain. Like I remember that like so vividly in my head. Wow. And then I just, I, I like, I just remember like all my my dad and you know, everybody trying to help me, and you know, it just. No, no matter anything anyone did, it just didn't help. Wow. You know, I was so, so messed do up. You, do you think that those things, like being molested by a priest and being told if you tell anyone you're going to go to hell, which you know that's not the truth, right? Absolutely, yes. He might be frying in hell. Yeah. Um, well, you he's know, in we, jail now, actually. Well, he's in jail. So hopefully he has repented from his sins, and mm -hmm. hopefully he is doing something about this terrible— and, and that's great. I'm glad to hear that justice has been done, because so oftentimes mm -hmm. justice is not done, especially in those situations. But do you feel that these things— you know, the death of your grandmother, you know, and that she was your only safe place. And you said that you've been molested by more than just the priest, but mm -hmm. that kind of emotional abuse that came from the priest and sexual abuse. Do you think that that played a factor in who you became as a young Absolutely. man who battled with v domestic violence, who battled with drugs and alcohol? Absolutely. Tell me Absolutely. why. Well, um, I mean, I was searching to fit in, you know, and I, you know, as I f grew up, I, f I started hanging out with kids that, you know, didn't have relationships with their parents, didn't even have parents around even yeah. pretty much most of my friends in high school, like were raised by single moms that were bartenders, mm. you know? So, uh, I mean, as, as I got older, now I started looking for, you know, acceptance in other places and where I found it was in, you know, when I was messed up, I was the fun guy. I was the guy everybody wanted to be around. Mm -hmm. And so that became my way of life. It became like a cycle that just repeated itself over and over again. You know, I, I'd get messed up. I'd go to a party. Everybody would be laughing. I'd fall over. Something funny would happen. And I would just be like, you know, every the guy that everybody wanted to hang out with, you mm -hmm. know. And I loved it. I mm -hmm. loved being that guy. Mm -hmm. And so, so what you know, changed? What what made you come to the place of I need to lose a hundred pounds? I need to quit doing alcohol and drugs. I yeah. need to get out of debt. I need to stop this abusive relationship with my wife and my children. What do, what brought it, the change? It was my son. 
Um, you, you, you mentioned the uh, roller coaster ride with my daughter that I couldn't go on. That was a month before my son was born. When my son was born, I had a moment where I looked in his eyes and my dad died of a heart attack at eight, uh, when I was 18 years old. He was 42. Mm-hmm. And I had a moment where I looked in my son's eyes and I'm like, I'm 10 pounds. Or I'm, I'm 10 years younger than my dad was when he died. I'm 53 pounds heavier th- than he was when he died. My dad never really had a drug addi- or alcohol addiction. He did drink wine, but he was never really an addict. Mm-hmm. And so I had all of these things that I did that my dad never did, and I'm heavier. And all I kept thinking was, is I'm going to die of a heart attack, mm. and I'm going to leave this little boy. And I was 18 when my dad died. It, it, it rocked my world. Mm. I, I, I miss my dad. Words cannot express how much I miss my father. <laughs> it's been 17 years. I would give anything to talk with my dad right now. <laughs> I miss him so much. <laughs> um, and I didn't want to do that to my kids. <laughs> I just didn't want to do that to my kids. And I'm like, if I died at 42, my son would be 10. Like, <laughs> what kind of influence would I have on his life? I, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't make any impact on him, you, I, you know? So I had to change. I had to change everything. I had to learn how to be a man because I was supposed to teach this little boy how to be a man. And I was a little boy at 32 years old. Yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was very fortunate that I, I, I had a friend from high school that was posting on Facebook all the time about what she was doing. And um, her mom had just recently passed away. So I had messaged her just to kind of like say, hey, I see what you're doing. And, you know, could you help me sort of thing? Mm-hmm. And and she, you would have been so proud of her because it was she had gotten back from her first Danny weekend, like maybe two weeks before, hmm. and she totally formed me. She totally did the like she read a, like the opinion script to me, and like I. <laughs> okay, I hold on was, one second, Jim. Yeah. This is hilarious because I I want to I want those who are listening to be able to understand what we're talking about. So she went to a first steps to success, uh, which is a training seminar. We teach in communications and sales and marketing and business and job career growth things like that and annihilating your debt. And so she had just come back from that event, and so she actually stuck to the system mm-hmm. that we teach them of being able to build relationships and good communication and honoring other people as you are going to then eventually present whatever product or job opportunities that she had available. And so, wow, how awesome. Like, could you imagine if you had contacted yeah. her a month before or a week oh before, gosh, she would yeah. have blown totally you out of the water and jacked the whole thing up. When we continue back after this short break, we're going to dig deeper into Jim's story of, of what inspired him and what steps did he take to lose the weight, to get out of debt, to, to change his career and to, to restore his relationship with his wife and his kids. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Jim's cry for help brought more than just help. It brought a revelation that changed the rest of his life. Find out what he heard next on The Danny Johnson Show. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. Hi, this is Danny Johnson. Whether you work from home or run a corporation, you need a strategy to get you from where you are now to where you want to be. It's especially true in marketing. I've seen so many companies dump so much money into promoting their products, but without a strategy, most of the money just goes right down the toilet. That's why I've been telling people about Vast Solutions. They've put together a team of some of the best minds in web design, social media, SEO, online and offline marketing, as well as advertising. Together, they will help your company build a comprehensive marketing strategy that not only covers all the bases, but is tailored to your unique needs. 
Quit throwing money at your marketing. Contact Vast Solutions at 312-330-5105 and start building a real marketing strategy that works. That's 312-330-5105 or visit 3eincrease.com. Again, that's 3, the letter E, increase.com. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. So Jim was over 340 pounds. He, his dad died when he was 18. He's looking at his little baby, brand newborn baby boy, saying, wow, my dad died when I was 18. That's 10 years from now, from the age. Like his dad was 42, he was 32, going, I don't want to leave my son, and I don't want to set a bad example. So he decided to make a change. He started to look for solutions. And so, Jim, you were just telling us that your, your old friend from high school, you reconnected on Facebook. Thank you, Lord, for Facebook. And she yes. introduced you to DannyJohnson.com and yes. First Steps to Success. What happened next? Um, we went through gems. Uh, I had a whole revelation where I realized how I had been, you know, pushing my my real self down so to kind of try and fit in with the world yeah. and when that happened I lost it mm. uh, I broke down I just had a moment where I realized you know I was a sapphire as a kid I used to get beaten for it um, I turned to drugs and alcohol because it was my way of saying oh don't worry I'm just messed up if people didn't like me yeah. I'm really not like this so to say mm -hmm. um, and when that happened I went home uh, and I just had a fire lit under my butt. Like mm -hmm. I sold a bunch of stuff uh, because I wanted to get to the next dynasty. Uh, uh, my friend luckily, you know, loaned me the money mm -hmm. to go to dynasty. So I was able to buy my ticket at first steps. I sold a bunch of stuff so I could pay her back. Um, I started, you know, learning how to form people and, and putting those um, stuff I learned into practice. Yep. I wound up getting a really great, great job. Um, for this corporation, I was making more money than I had ever made. Mm -hmm. um, I started going, they, they actually created a position for me based on just the interview, how great it went. Wow. Um, and it was all stuff I learned at first steps, forming people, job domination, you know, other stuff too, job domination mm -hmm. and, and that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, I was making great money, uh, paid off $93,000 of debt in 33 months. Um, and then I had a moment uh, just a couple months ago where I was at this job and things had kind of turned. Corporate went a completely different way. They were just all about saving money. They didn't care about customers. They didn't care about service. Hmm. All they cared about was the bottom line. And that was just totally against what I had learned yeah. and what I was trying to impl impl implement myself. So I had this moment where I was like, God gave me all this talent. I'm wasting it. I'm sitting in front of a computer screen making no impact on the world, no impact on my family. And I need to do more. And I talked with my wife. Uh, I stepped out in faith. We started our own little transportation company. Nice. Um, and I have a, you know, a home-based business that I'm doing as well. And uh, from leaving that corporate job that I was making so much money at, mm -hmm. uh, in the two months that I've been gone from it, I've actually made more money in the two months than I did in the previous four months. I'm basically making double what I was making. Wow. And, and at my corporate job, I was making triple what I was making before, before that. <laughs> so it's just like uh, God has blessed me so yes. much. I mean, my relationships with my kids are just amazing. Um, I mean, my daughter came to first the last First Steps. Mm -hmm. And and since she's been back from First Steps, now her and my daughters are, are, are organizing a yard sale so they can raise money for Belize. Nice. And, um, to you help know, the orphan. And yes. you and your wife, how's the relationship between you and your amazing. beautiful wife? <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I mean, we've learned how, we're learning how to talk to each other more yes. and more every day. My wife was just at First Steps. Mm -hmm. since, I can't even tell you what she's been like since she was at First Steps. <laughs> it's another story in itself. Wow. So, Jim, I mean, I'm so proud of great. you. So you've lost 104 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to die of a heart attack. You have yeah. 
quadrupled your income since you first came to First Step Success. You're now an entrepreneur. You have mended and restored the relationships with your kids. You've become the example as a man. You've grown up. You've learned to, became, to become a man at First Steps and creating a dynasty. And so many people choose not to do that. And Jim, I'm so proud of you because you truly are an inspiration that no matter what big of a mess that you created all on your own, based on the childhood or not, doesn't matter what it's based on, but you chose to change your life and you chose at a time that was so crucial. You're looking at your newborn baby going enough is enough. And I'm so proud of you that you made that decision, but you followed the decision through by getting appropriate training that whatever it is that you weren't trained up for as a kid, you didn't just blame everybody for that. You're like, all right, I need to learn how to dominate the job world. So I'm going to do that. And you did that. You've paid off $90,000 worth of debt in less than three years, losing the hundred pounds. I mean, you have massively increased your skill set and you've had incredible success. And the thing I celebrate the most is you're now walking with God. You now honor your wife. You now honor your relationship with your children. You've restored relationships and paid off debt and grown your income and you are an entrepreneur. And your family cares about taking care of the poor. This in my profession or opinion is success. Jim, thanks so much for sharing your story with us. Thank we you, appreciate Danny. you. This is Thank Danny you Johnson. Much. We'll continue with more after this. 18 months doesn't seem like much time to change a life that's been damaged that badly. But find out what Candace did and how it unlocked the door to a better life next on The Danny Johnson Show. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. There you are in a sea of broken relationships. And you really can't figure out why. It just kind of seems that this is how your life is. Have you ever felt that way? That things that are just continuously are bad or just broken and, and you just can't quite figure it out? That's exactly where Candace found herself some time ago. Candace is a client of ours. She is a faithful one, Candace Thompson. She came out to First Steps to Success back in 2014. In fact, January 2014, where her life began to change. I'm excited to bring her on here with you. First of all, she's drop dead gorgeous. Uh, she's a mother with a whole bunch of kids, an amazing husband, and a life that has been transformed. So Candace, uh, please share your story to inspire those that are listening today. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Danny, for um, having me on. It's definitely an honor and pleasure um, to be with you and share with your guests. Um, just to a little bit of my background, um, coming from broken, seriously broken relationships, it all started um, actually as a two-month-old. My father um, decided you know, to that his life wasn't as important to my sister and myself early on. So he mm -hmm. committed suicide when I was two months old. Um, so faced with that tragedy from the beginning, it kind of spiraled out of control from there. Um, what did your mom do from there? Um, she, um, years later, realizing she was a bit broken herself, mm -hmm. I, I don't think she ever actually recovered or um, got the proper help to deal with a tragedy such as that. Mm -hmm. um, Did she end up remarrying and things like that? Um, actually, you know, man after man. Mm -hmm. Eventually, she did marry um, my t my next two siblings' um, father. Wow! And he was actually um, um, an abuser as mm -hmm. well as a heavy, you know, cocaine abuser as well. Mm -hmm. So mm. it kind of continued to spiral out of control right. and it, it went for a turn for even if you, you think it could get any worse, mm -hmm. it actually had. She divorced him and um, later married again mm -hmm. um, to who was known to be it, it, my sister's and I abuser, um, sexual abuser. Oh, gosh, your poor mother. Wow. So, right. So, um. It, Understanding now, as I've gotten older, that I guess we tend to make those decisions, you know, 
not really knowing that we need to get healthy as well as parents or as moms. Yes. So um, it, it, like I said, it continued with, which um, has led to, you know, just my trauma, of course. Yes. And, um, you know, early on being very promiscuous, yeah. um, becoming a teenage mom mm-hmm. at the age of um, um, 18, mm-hmm. marrying um, at 19, um, my oldest son's father, who turned out to be an abuser as well, mm. um, a mentally and physical abuser. So, um, so were you mentally and physically abused by your first husband? Yes. What did that look like, Candace? Um, it was like if you ever heard the term "walking on eggshells." Mm. You just never knew when he was going to explode. You just never knew, um, you know, what was going to happen day to day. I had been thrown through closet doors, mm. um, choked to almost being passed out. Mm. Um, just beaten for, you know, just no apparent reason. I guess he was just having a bad day. Mm -hmm. And um, he happened to be military too, which, Mm -hmm. you know, added an additional, you know, I guess, turn for me in not knowing where to get help. Because it's like, do you go to them to, you know, get the help? And then he loses the income to take care of my son and I. So, you know, that was kind of like a tough, you know, time for what, what I would say rock bottom for me. It was definitely rock bottom because I was looking at myself as, you know, how did I end up here? You know, single, you know, teenage mom being abused, coming from abuse and, and, and not knowing what to do or where to turn or how to get out of it, actually. Wow. Wow. Man, that's hard. And being so young, you know what I mean? I mean, you were barely, you know, when you're, by the time you're being abused and being thrown through closet doors and almost being choked to death, you know, you're still just barely over a teenager. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, I mean, what were you thinking at that time? Were you thinking that this is just life? Because that's all you knew before. That's all I knew. Um, I, I had said to myself prior to, um, I guess, really realizing that hey, I need to protect my son, that mm-hmm. I guess this is what I have to deal with. Absolutely. That's what I, uh, and I remember the last episode and thinking of my son, and by this time he was about to be two years old, and I said, there has to be more. Yeah. And and um, and at that point, it, I mean, when I say the, that last incident, it was bad to where I could have died. Mm. I was literally in that state where, um, he was literally about to like ram my head into the ground. That's how it was. Wow. And that's when my life flashed uh, in front of me as I can't leave my child. Yeah. And that was really like the breaking point for me. So you left him, obviously. I did. I did. I I strategically left him (laughs) Mm -hmm. and I can laugh about it now because, you know, not knowing what to do. All I knew to do was to try to plan properly. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, it had to be, uh, one of like those night getaways where right. if I didn't get away at that very moment, my life would have been over. Now, how did you ever get introduced to Danny Johnson.com? It was actually through a, a really, really good friend. Um, the Grays, me and Tony Gray. Mm-hmm. And, um, w- we had attended a church together and she bought it to our church. Hmm. And that was in September of 2013. And I remember I had just had my fourth son and um, we had filed bankruptcy. I want to say it was 2009. Yes, because it was discharged uh, 2010. This is the first time I've ever talked about that. Mm -hmm. And um you know, and, and at that time we had done it for what I would call asset protection because we had a few rental properties and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to kind of like realign everything, but just realizing it, living from paycheck to paycheck just wasn't going to do it. And um, um, Mia had bought it to our church and I sat and I just remembered that day it was the birthday party of our four, uh, our fourth son. He was turning one. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't miss this meeting. It was just, you know how you have that call in your spirit that you just, you just can't miss it. You knew it was something for you. And Mm -hmm. I remember sitting there and unfortunately I didn't even care whether or not I made it to my son's birthday party on time, but, um, I clung to 
what you had to say. And I just knew that that was the answer for my family. And so this was war on debt that she brought to the church. It was war on debt. It was debt. And um, it's crazy because my husband had been telling me years before we ha- I had um, uh, been a part of the class, the War on Debt class, um, Mia bringing it to the church, that we it's certain things that we should cut back on and certain yeah. things to do. But in my head, when you when you grow up with nothing, you think that things are it's, it's the replacement for that void. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that somehow if you make money, that success is shown in the amount of stuff that you buy. Absolutely. And and if that means going into debt for the stuff, that means going into debt for the stuff, even though it's the most unwise thing that you can do. So long story short, you ended up remarrying an, a new man, and you have three more sons with the new man. Yes. And you guys are just plugging away in life and yes. end up declaring bankruptcy in 2009, and you get introduced to War on Debt at your church. And yes. then you end up at a First Steps to Success January of 2014. Yes. What happened there? Well, the story getting there is is nothing but God because um, Mia is so great at just watering a seed. Mm-hmm. She's such a blessing. She would present it and say, hey, you should come and me. Okay, what is going to be there? What's going to happen? And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to go to something I don't know about. And, and mm-hmm. who are all these following and these people? And, you know, me being in my usual protective mode, you right. know because of my background. and um, So you were skeptical. I'm very skeptical. Even though War on Debt was a solution for your financial issues, yes. but you were still skeptical about a live two or three day event that was taking place that Mia and her husband had had so much restoration from. You know, a lot of people are that way. And you know, that largely being skeptical and being afraid was still a sign that rejection was still in you. Oh, absolutely. And that there was distrust that was in you. And even though it was a godly place where you got introduced to DannyJohnson.com. It's like, hmm, you know, I don't know. You know, who is that broad? You know, she's probably all in it for the money. You know, it's probably some scam. You know, what she's going to try to roll me into? Who does she think she is? Yeah, bro, that story probably ain't true anyway, right? You know, who are these people following her? Wait, well, she has 300,000 friends on Facebook. Well, you know, she probably bought all those likes, right? I mean, th- these are the things that people like go through their head. You know, she probably did. That's probably how she makes her money is doing those seminars. You you can't trust them people like that. And by the way, yeah, she calls herself a Christian, but you know what theological twist does she have? Unfortunately, that that's a reality. And it's really sad. First of all, we, we live in a world that is just so messed up and so many people in leadership that are just jacked up and shouldn't be there. And they're there to pillage and steal and kill instead of to help. And so I understand why people have that opinion of me. Uh, this is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more of the story after this. 18 months doesn't seem like much time to change a life that's been damaged that badly. But find out what Candace did and how it unlocked the door to a better life next on The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, this is Danny Johnson. Whether you work from home or run a corporation, you need a strategy to get you from where you are now to where you want to be. It's especially true in marketing. I've seen so many companies dump so much money into promoting their products. But without a strategy, most of the money just goes right down the toilet. That's why I've been telling people about Vast Solutions. They've put together a team of some of the best minds in web design, social media, SEO, online and offline marketing, as well as advertising. Together, they will help your company build a comprehensive marketing strategy that not only covers all the bases, but is tailored to your unique needs. Quit throwing money at your marketing. Contact Vast Solutions at 312 312- Three three zero five one zero five, and start building a real marketing strategy that works. That's three one two three three zero five one zero five, or visit three e increase dot com. Again, that's three the letter e increase dot com. In your face and in your corner, you've never had a coach like this before. This is the Danny Johnson Show. So there you are. You know, you're skeptical, right? That's where Candace was. She's completely skeptical. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. Welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Today, we are unpacking a story that is truly dynamic. Imagine your father commits suicide when you're two months old. Imagine your mother does what any mother would do. She's got two little babies. She's out there looking for somebody that's going to help take care of her family. She's wounded. She's lost. She's confused. She's hurting so desperately. 
brings in a series of men that she's hoping are going to help her raise her daughters, ends up remarrying a man, having a couple more kids, that turns out to be a cocaine addict and an abuser, then moving on to another who does the same, but this time he sexually abuses the daughters. This is exactly where Candace found herself as a little girl, going through a series of different fathers that brought hope and promise, but instead brought drugs, physical, and sexual abuse. At 18, she ends up pregnant, out of wedlock, marries the father, who turns out to be violent with Candace. She's got a newborn baby and a violent man who's in the military. What does she do? She got the courage to leave and then found herself then remarried again to a good man this time. She obviously found a new faith, changed some things in her life. But in 2009, her and her husband were uh, declaring bankruptcy, made some poor financial choices and found up, wound up hemorrhaging under the absolute horrible pressure of debt. 2014, January, she was introduced to the website, dannyjohnson.com and first steps to success after much prying by her friend, Mia Gray, <laughs> uh, decided to come out after moving past her skepticism. I'm excited for her to share with you what has happened in her life in just 18 short months. Candace, take it away. Danny, I remember being in um, First Steps in January 2014 out in LA, and my husband and I looked at each other. You asked us to commit a year of our life to you, and we would never recognize it uh, ourselves or our life again at that very point. I remember making that commitment and saying, we are all in. Hmm. We immediately bought the entire Danny Johnson um, University wow. and um, we committed to attending every single First Steps to Success, wow. every dynasty wow. and has since dramatically changed our life. Um, I'm now blessed to be home with my children, to um, also be able to the pleasure of taking care of my grandmother who has wow. Alzheimer's. Wow. And um, we have since paid off over $148,000 in debt. <laughs> We're now completely consumer debt free. Wow. Praise God. And um, we just have left, you know, our rental properties mortgages mm -hmm. and we are chugging away at that. Mm -hmm. And um, my relationships are mending daily. Mm -hmm. I've committed myself to forgiving daily. It's a yes. daily process. Yes. Also committing myself to surrendering. It's a yes. daily process. And the only way that I know that myself through all the pain that has occurred in my life could commit to that is by staying plugged in to the awesome Danny Johnson <laughs> community, which is amazing. I love you guys dearly, mm -hmm. as well as God, you know, yes. and and committing, you know, to say, God, it's in you that I'm able to do it. Yeah. Um, my husband thanks um, you daily, Danny, for <laughs> for who you are and, and, and how unconditionally you love everyone mm -hmm. that has been placed in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we are uh, just happy. Mm -hmm. I've never felt such freedom mm -hmm. in my life to be able to be home with my children. Yeah. Yeah. So you got four boys four and boys. one's in college now. So you got three left. One is a baby still. I mean, he's a little, <laughs> little guy. Yes. Um, so in your early years with your marriage, because you just renewed your vows with your husband yes. and in the last 18 months, your marriage has come to this incredible rich place. Oh, Talk yeah. a little bit about that because you were such a wounded girl oh, who absolutely. became a wounded woman and trust was a big issue between you and your husband. Like you, you're still kind of always waiting for this godly man, this good man that God brought into your life to turn into the monsters that you had experienced in the past. What brought that healing uh, for in you? Because that's where it had to happen. It had to happen inside of you because when you don't, when you're not healed from the past men experiences, the father who commits suicide and abandons his children to the men that, that your poor mother uh, wound up attracting into her life that abused you guys. And then of course your first husband who was abusive. What brought you to that place of healing? I would have to say um, just surrendering. Mm -hmm. As 
And I had to know what that looked like for Candace. Mm -hmm. um, every, I think that there is a definition of surrenderance for each individual. Mm -hmm. And in my case, like you said, it was the trust. Yes. And I had to learn to not put my faith in my husband, yes. but to solely put my faith in God himself. Yes. And when I learned to do that wholeheartedly, um, it, it, you talk about the richness God is so amazing to put you in this place where he can, you know, love on you enough mm -hmm. to where even when, you know, your husband isn't doing what he's supposed to do, God still has it. Yes. And I, and that was part of my surrenderance in knowing that God was bigger than any issue I had with any man, yes. any woman, yes. any, um, you know, situation. Mm -hmm. um, because learning early on, my first protector, my father, he, you know, had committed suicide. And then the next protector, who was my mother. So I had it from both angles, both yeah. a man and woman. Yeah. So the only person I could trust to get me out was God himself. Mm -hmm. Who else could I rely on? Yeah. You know, and because any faith prior to that, I had put it, he tells you not to yeah. put your faith in man. And I had yeah. done that and the disappointment would just happen over yes. and over again. And even in, you know, with my husband today, it was like, well, I trusted you and you. And then it wasn't until the connection to the Danny Johnson um, community, as well as staying plugged in to, you know, um, first steps to success, as well as dynasty and teaching me how to to purge and continue to go after the roots that has, you know, placed me to where I am today, mm -hmm. but where I'm able to heal and, and know that it's okay to have bad days, Yes, but it's also okay to say, okay, God, you know, you, you can cover me in the bad day Yes, and to keep after it. Yes. And, and that's why I said earlier, surrenderance is and forgiveness it yes. is something I've committed to every single day, even at the risk of being hurt, yes. even at the risk of uh, not trusting, even at the risk of failing. Mm -hmm. But I wake up every day and say, God, today is your day. I surrender and trust you. Mm -hmm. And even throughout the day, you know, I may have a hiccup or whatever. Yep. It's like I have to put myself back into that remembrance. Okay, God, I surrender and Amen. I trust you. Amen. You know, and a lot of people can't do that, Candace. They choose not to. Everyone can do it. And God gives us all the ability to surrender. What's so interesting is that without surrendering, there, that's a sign of no trust. Yes. You have to trust. And you can't love anybody without trust. Yes. If there's no trust, there's no love. And so first we're supposed to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, with all of our resources, everything that is inside of us, we're to love him. And that means that we have to trust him. So no matter what blows up in our face or whatever plans that didn't happen, or there's a detour, we have to trust. And when we do that, we then come to a place of contentment and peace and not striving and bickering and being a contentious person on the planet because Lord knows we got enough contentious people on the planet. We do not need any more of those. This yes. is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. If you've ever wanted to make millions, change the world, be the voice for the voiceless and have a blast doing it, then you need to spend some time with this lady right here. She's been doing it for years and she'll show you how. For families in Santa Pancha, Nicaragua, life is filled with fear and struggle. They don't have enough food for their kids, clean water is hard to find, and they're living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel on top of mining tunnels that could explode and sink at any moment. But a miracle is in the making, and you can be a part of transforming this village. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha to see how you can help. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org, and click on Santa Pancha. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are gonna help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's gonna feel. And now back to the Danny Johnson show. So what do you need to surrender to today? Right? And do you really trust the God that put you on this planet? Do you trust him? Have you surrendered over to his 
sovereign headship. He's our king. And when you fully trust, then you can have a heart that's filled with peace and contentment. And you can step out in faith and do things that you normally would never do. What an amazing day, right? These two stories of these two people who came from such broken, terrible past, such trauma, so much violence, and so much failure to then becoming the kind of successful people that they are today. Candace having that dream to raise her own children and through the first steps to success in creating a dynasty model, man, she and her husband learned how to pay off $147,000 worth of debt in 18 months and to be able to shrink back things that were just not important so she could be the mother of her own children, that she could raise them. This is success for Candace, right? And becoming debt-free is success for the family and, and her being healed and no longer bringing distrust issues issues into the relationships that she had around her, including with her sons, but now being able to just trust and to forgive and to move beyond. That is nothing short of a miracle. The other thing that we didn't get the chance to tell you is that both these two people that we introduced you to, Candace and Jim alike, their families have also been families that have joined the community here at dannyjohnson.com of taking $1 out of every 10 that we make and helping the extreme poor. We all come from broken places and we want to do what we can to help lift somebody else up who has been born into absolute brokenness, born into a place where they have no water, they have no food born into a place where their shelter is terrible, where it's like Fausto and his brother and, and his sister, Joanna, who it's plastic. Literally, their house is just plastic, black, black plastic, like from black plastic bags and, and scrap metal for a roof that leaks and, and their house gets flooded every single month. Or people like the families that are like Maria, who is living in a dump, literally in a dump. Imagine the smoke that's in that dump that her children are ingesting every single day. And they're looking through the trash that others have thrown away to find food and recyclables so they can buy food with the, with the recycled money that they found. Listen, you and I can help. Just as Jim's family and Candace's family is helping, you can also do the same. Their children are involved. Their spouses are involved. Everyone's involved. Join us on this adventure. Go to kingsransom.org. Again, that's kingsransom.org. We're building 1,000 brand new homes for people who have no homes. Families, moms, dads, grandpas, and grandmas who have nothing, no safety, no food, no water. We're going to bring it and no sanitation. We're going to bring all of those things, including an education to help them start businesses so they can be self-sustained themselves. Go to kingsransom.org and give what you can. 10 bucks. Don't go to Starbucks today. Instead, give the 10 bucks to help a family. Commit to doing that every single month. Or if you're in a position that you can help pay for a house for a brand new family, that's $5,200. 5,200 bucks. Come on, you know you've blown $5,200 on stupid things before. Let this $5,200 go to something of great purpose. I hope you enjoyed the show today. We'd love to hear from you on our website right below where the show was airing or on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Talk to you tomorrow another, about another exciting topic. God bless. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to dannyjohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS.